Uh, it's time for another math easy solution to discuss a uh, pretty interesting topic on mortgage amortization go over the formula and the proof for it and also go over basically quickly our, our newest uh, mortgage calculator basically uh, we just create our newest online calculator and you can uh, yeah it's basically a mortgage calculator you can go to mortgage calculator.mes.fm or, or you could go a short URL a version of it, mc.mes.fm. This just redirects to this just for shortened purposes. Yeah, so if I were to uh, go to it, you, you can basically go to mc.mes.fm and this just uh, redirects to mortgagecalculator.mes.fm. And here it is. So you could plug in random values for your house value. You could even go up like this. So you could type it in, etc. And then these automatically change right here. So you see, this is automatically changing. All these, these are the payments. You can do loan amount, interest rate. I'll, I'll do another video where I break down this uh, website. And also, there's a payment breakdown: how much interest, how much uh, insurance, or monthly. Um, yeah, how much tax, etc. Yeah, so you have the tax right here, and also you could compare biweekly versus monthly payments. How much interest you save using um, uh, biweekly payments. Yes, yeah, so I'll do. Uh, I'll go in depth on this calculator in another video. But now I'm going to go over basically mortgage and do an introduction, and also go proof of the formula. So mortgage, it is a loan basically given where the house or property that you own or want to own is used as collateral yeah, in case the borrower can't pay yeah pay off the mortgage. So if you can't pay it off, basically the uh, the bank or whoever just takes your house. Uh, payments are determined based on an agreed upon fixed or variable interest rate and sometimes they have it in between where it's fixed for a certain number of years and you go and change it etc and there's also yeah property taxes insurance fees etc so other so it takes in, into other accounts for the payments and payments are usually determined such that they are constant and thus simplifies the finances of the borrower and this is basically the idea of the concept we're going to use to prove our basic formula. And amortization, this just uh, this is just a process of decreasing or paying off an amount or loan over a period of time. So instead of paying all up front, you pay in a certain number of months, years, etc. It comes from Middle Eng English uh, amortizing, meaning to kill. So you're basically killing off uh, the payment, but gradually. Now the basic amortization formula. This is uh, yeah. I'll go through another one with a balloon payment version. But uh, basically, if you have to pay yeah pay a mortgage uh, throughout let's say many years, uh, but you want to pay the exact same constant payment. So that's this idea. Uh, this formula is what we use, and basically it takes into account in the compounding of interest. So mortgage amortization formula. Basically, just the formula is just A equals P. Uh, times by i 1 plus i then power of n all divided by i plus no 1 plus i that's the interest rate i and then uh, all divided by n minus 1 where basically a is a periodic payment amount so this is the, in our case will be monthly if we're doing mortgage uh, usually uh, so and now p that's the amount of principal or loan owing so so this is subtracting any down payment so if you owe, if you got a loan of yeah, loan of 300. If you put 50 down, so then your actual loan is 250,000 or, or or whatever. And this is your piece. So this is how much we have to pay back. And then the I is the period interest rate. So note also if the installments are monthly. So if you're paying monthly, an interest rate is annual. You need to divide by 12, so you get the per month uh, interest. And n is just the total number of periods. And now this is a uh, different uh, version of this uh, formula. This is including a final balloon payment. Say we want to pay, um, let's say, $100,000 within 30 years, and then the last one will pay $20,000 all, all at the end. So a lot of businesses use this method basically as a way to build up capital later and pay it off to save interest. And uh, this one, it's pretty much the same formula, but now we have to subtract this payment because we're going to be paying less of the loan for 30 years is at the end we're going to pay all 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 at the uh, up front at the end so that's why there's a minus sign here so it's the same thing in the beginning part and then there's minus i times b which is a final balloon payment uh, all divided by a you know, 
1 plus i all divided to the power of n plus 1 minus uh, 1 plus i, where b is final balloon payment. And if the borrower wants only, yeah, like I was just saying, if the bor borrower wants to only amortize or mortgage part of the loan, yeah, or, or mortgage payment, uh, they can decide to make console payments A until a specific time and then pay off the remaining loan with one large payment B, which is called a balloon payment. And once again, if B equals to zero, then this just goes away. So this, an amortization form is the same as uh, the basic one. So we just get this, if this is zero. And now the derivation of the basic one, I'll do the other part after I get the basic one. Yeah, so in this derivation of this basic formula, we just need to follow the first these requirements. So, ba so the, this one's based on these like payments are constant, so they're always the same. Interest rate is constant in this case. The interest is compounded during the installment. So every installment, uh, then you would have that interest rate. If it's, it's per month, you would need to divide the annual interest rate by 12, etc. So this is basically adding interest to each installment based on the amount owing that installment period. So again, this is this is the idea of compound interest. So initially, your highest interest is at the beginning because you're paying interest on the total um, total principal that you owe, and then every time you pay money, you have to pay on the um, the total minus that m amount you paid. So you're going to be adding less and less interest throughout, and then at the end, you pay the least interest. So yeah. So to uh, prove this, let's start off with the basic. Let's uh, let uh, let's basically let this uh, function p of t represent the principal amount owing at time t. So at p of the initial time, which is zero, so at this equals to, well, we owe p. This is how much we loan out. So we could say this is our initial loan amount. So, and, and now the, the, first, the first payment will uh, take into account interest on this principal loan right here. So if if this is how much we owe at time zero after let's say the first month or first year or basically the second time period P of T, how much we owe is gonna be well um, how much yeah how much we owed before so P of zero and then we have to add interest to this so P of zero times it by I and then we subtract the payment. And this is basically the idea of the interest. For if, if we owed P amount, and then after the, actually this is one, call this one. So after the first payment, we are paying, you no, know, what we owe then is what we use, what we owed before, but with interest added to it, that's this part here, and then we minus our payment. And now with this part here, if we just uh, factor out the P of zero, so we get, uh, this one to factor it out, we get one plus i right here minus a. And then if we include this value here, this equals to p, the so capital P, this equals to capital P times it by one plus i and then minus a right here. Yeah, and now to make the derivation easier, let's uh, let r equals to 1 plus i, just so we don't need to deal with this always having this 1 plus i in there. This, so then this equals 2 p r minus a. So that's our first payment. Yeah, so now if we look at the second payment, we get p of 2. So then this equals 2, well, again, it's going to be p of 1 plus p of 1 times by i minus a. A right here and again this part here uh, factor it out this is the same thing as writing yeah, so I just wanted to illustrate the R point so take the P of 1 out 1 plus I I'll make it better bracket minus a so again this could be just R so this just equals to P of 1 R minus a and then where P of 1 equals to P R yeah, P R minus A, that's P of one. Now we times it by R and then we subtract by A again. So this is our P of uh, one. And that's this right here, which equals P R minus A. So if we uh, uh, simplify this, this we, we get P R squared minus A R minus A. And now similarly, if we go to P three, so the third time period, we get equals two now P of two, the same thing. We always get 
the p of the previous times by r minus a. And then p of 2, that equals 2. We'll just plug this in. That's just this here. And then we just times it by this r right here. So we get p r cubes. As you can see, the pattern a r squared minus a r minus a right there. See the pattern? We just have this r going bigger and bigger on the left side. So if we keep doing this going down and down until we get to a general p of t, we get now, this is going to be always p of t minus 1 times by r minus a. Yeah, and then when we look at the pattern, this just equals 2. Well, we always have a p, then r to the power of, well, whatever this is. This is 3, that's 3. And then if we go back up here, we had a 2, that's 2. And then the other one above, there's a 1, there's a 1 right there. So this just means that we have to have a p or power of t. That's this one right here. So generally like that. And then we minus, so just take this minus out because there's a minus everywhere. And now we have this, take the a out of there. I'm just going to take this a out. And now what we get is if we look at from the right side, we have, well, uh, there is a 1 right here. So there's a 1 in front of it. So we have a 1. And then we have to add, well, there's an r right there, r. Then there's an r squared. Then there's an r cubed. Actually, no, no, not cubed. So there's an r squared here. But as you can see, this is squared. So that's a 2. This is a 3. Now I go back up here. There, uh, just where the in front of the a is. So there's a 1. That's r to the power of 1. There's a 2 right here. And now in this case, there is no r. There's an r 0. There's a 1. So what this means is because again there's a 2, 3, this is this goes all the way up to well r3 plus all the way until we get to r t minus 1. So that's the uh, pattern that we, we get basically. So basically this is always uh, 1 less than this t. Exactly here. 2 is just equals to 3 minus 1. And then same here, 1, that just equals to 2 minus 1, that's the 2. And again, this just equals to t minus 1. And now the interesting part is this. This is called basically the geometric series right here. Yeah, so this is following a geometric series. And there is a definite uh, sum formula for it, like a summation formula for it. Yeah, so now if you uh, recall the geometric series, uh, this is what it is. I'll prove this actually in a later video how to get this. It's uh, pretty basic. But this is basically the formula of a geometric series where you have a uh, summation of a s value of, of powers where it increases incrementally. So you have 1 plus r, r to the power of 1, plus r to the power of 2, plus r to the power of 3, plus r to the power of 4, etc. Yeah, all the way up to yeah, all the way up to a really high r to the power. In this case, we'll, have, we'll write it t minus 1 so that the formula fits in like this. Well, we'll the summation just becomes from t equals 1 to t, this is erase that like that, this is just a t, uh, uh, then we get of summation of r to power of k minus 1. So every time you plug it in, this is the same way as writing it, this is the formula that it equals to. So 1 minus r to the power of t, all the way by 1 minus uh, r right there. So this is the formula, and I'll prove this later. Now we could throw this inside there. So what we get is the ba the balance or I mean the principal owing or at any time t just equals to p r to the power of t minus a times it by now we have this one minus r t all divided by uh, one minus r yeah and now that we've uh, basically set up this equation for the principal owing or the balance at any time t now to solve the basic formula for amortization we know that at t equals to n, which is the amount of years you want to pay for or that your contract and your mortgage is to pay for, we expect the principal to be fully paid off. So what this means is at, uh, at t equals to n, we have p of n equals to 0. So this has to be fully paid off, and that's at 0. So if we plug this inside, we get p of r to power of n. Uh, that's because that's the t minus a, then we have 1 minus rn, 1 minus r. So we get this right here, and now we just solve for this a. And then if we solve this a the way we do it, well, we'll move this um, a to the left side, so we get 
a yeah a times 1 minus r n 1 minus r equals 2 p r n and now we could just multiply uh, this by 1 over 1 minus r and divided by 1 minus r n so that this goes over to this side so we just move it over there and flip it so a equals 2 p r n I'll put this r n like this and then times it by 1 minus r all divided by 1 minus r n right here so we multiply we divide by 1 minus r n and multiply 1 minus r to cancel these to get it over to here so we do that both sides so this cancels this basic algebra and now we uh, multiply this inside so we get p times it by r n minus right here we have r yeah we get r n uh, this is going to be n plus 1 but in fact, actually, this is, uh, yeah, we don't, don't actually need to do this because we're we're trying to solve for, well, r already, include, r already equals to 1 plus i. So what we could do is just plug that in instead, actually. So what we do have is 1 minus, uh, plug this inside right here. So 1 minus 1 plus i. And the reason we do this, just so that we can cancel some stuff out. I'll keep the r in here. I'll change those in a bit. So with this equals 2, we'll have it as 1 minus 1 minus i. So this equals to negative i. These cancel. Yes, yeah, so then this equals 2p 1 plus i n times it by this is equal to negative i. All divided by 1 minus uh, r, which is again 1 plus i right here, power of n. So now uh, this is a negative, we want that negative out. And one way to do that is basically multiply the top and bottom by negative 1. So we do that, uh, all this does, this becomes a positive and then this becomes a negative on the left side. So then we get finally our formula A equals 2 P, yeah, P times it by, well the, the negatives cancel, so I, and then 1 plus I, n all divided by this just switches place so we have a 1 plus i power of n yeah minus now 1 and there is our amortization formula for the basic version and if we scroll back up this is the exact same that we just showed earlier right here so there's the p times i 1 plus i power of n all divided by 1 plus i n minus 1 so we go back up to here and that's exactly what we have. Yeah, and now that we've solved basically the uh, basic formula, now let's include the balloon payment version. So if we include the final uh, balloon payment, uh, or then then basically the final balloon payment will, e will be equal to or equate to the final remaining balance plus interest. So we always have to include this interest. So what I mean by that is, let's say we have our initial uh, balance or initial uh, owing we is p of 0 then we have p of 1 exactly as I was doing above then p of 2 etc all the way until our final payment uh, using the mortgage uh, p of n so now that we have this and then we pay ha we have to pay with b so this goes all the way down until we have b equals to now p of n so this is our previous balance, what we, what we owe it the last year. For example, we have 30 years mortgage. So that'd be 30 years, that's the balance. Then we always have to include the interest. So this is always important to include. So this equals to P of N. Take this out, one plus uh, I. Again, this equals to P of N times it by R. Yeah, and I'm using this R just because again, it's gonna be easier to uh, formulate the formula or formulate the equation. So basically now that we have this out, this equals P of N times R, and now uh, just rearrange this, we'll have P of N equals 2 B over R. And now we know what P of N is from before, so because we already know that this is what P, uh, P of T equals 2, so we just put B of N, that's just this one right here. So this equals 2 P R n minus, and then we have to minus, yeah, so basically instead of this equaling to 0, this equals to b divided by r. And 1 
rn and then one minus r right here and now we just have to solve for a again so move the a by itself so we get a one minus rn over one minus r equals two p of rn so we're moving this to the left side and then this move it to the right minus b over r right there now we just multiply this top and bottom we get um, a equals 2 or just divide this out both sides this cancels we have now p r n 1 minus r over 1 minus r n minus now b yeah b and then, and then the same thing 1 minus r over 1 minus r n and also we need to include this r so we have this r right there and now this uh, left side, it's exact same basic formula. And then we plug in our i on the right side. So we'll go uh, a equals 2. In this case, this one was plug in this exact same thing. So we get pi, let's write that down, pi 1 plus i after rearranging all that power of n. And then 1 plus i n minus 1. And now when we look at the right side right here, we have this b and then again plug that uh, i in there so we have 1 1 uh, plus i inside the r and again we have this 1 plus i and we have a 1 minus uh, 1 plus i power of n this becomes well 1 minus 1 minus i this is a, put the expand that out of the negative this equals to so again negative i these cancel so we get again pi 1 plus i n so it's just tedious uh, right now but it's pretty straightforward it's tedious is rewriting this all the time so now this is going to be p uh, this is b and then we have this uh, negative i and again uh, this we want to get rid of the even though these negatives cancel we want to get rid of this one just to show that the payment a decreases and then we'll we'll multiply the top and bottom by uh, negative 1 and rearrange this so we have this right here and then times it by well negative 1 over negative 1 so that these switch so that these basically switch places this equals 2 pi 1 plus i n 1 plus i n minus 1 so now we have a minus uh, let's put the i in front i b and then we could even multiply this inside. So this switches places. So we have 1 plus i power of n. We'll just multiply this inside. n plus 1 minus 1 plus i. Just simplify. And there is basically our formula with the balloon payment. So it's the exact same thing as the basic. Now we just subtract i times b all divided by um, uh, 1 plus i power of n plus 1 and then minus 1 plus i. Yeah, and now some final notes if uh, once again if b equals to zero then we're just left with the basic formula and also while often used for mortgage related purposes this same formula can be used for other debts such as well short-term loans student loans credit cards uh, yeah, and credit cards since they all follow the same com uh, concept of compounded interest so that's all it is is compounding interest it is uh, also possible to rearrange the formula to solve for B, for the balloon payment B, the principal P, or the number of payments N, uh, but solving for I are done through numerical methods are not as straightforward. So yeah, you could rearrange these, etc. And when you solve for N, you would use uh, logarithmic functions because it's a power of N, so to solve it, you need to use natural log. Anyways, it's all for today. Hope you learned from this uh, video on mortgage. Hope you learned something, and also make sure to check out our calculator at mc.mes.fm. It's pretty useful. We'll be updating it. I'll get uh, another video out later on how to use it, and also, uh, yeah, basically some of these calculations. Anyways, it's all for today. Hope you learned. You can download these exact notes in the link below, and stay tuned for another math easy solution